Okay, good afternoon, everyone. You're at the live landing page critique webinar brought to you by Situated Research and QCamp. Today we're going to talk about navigation structure as well as website organization. We're also going to discuss website color psychology, graphics of your website, font size um, of the content that's on your website. Uh, we will also look at the colors that you use um, and also look at headings. We're also going to look at your content on your website. Uh, we'll look at social media integration and search engine optimization. And we'll also look at page layout and structure. So I want to tell you a little bit about uh, each of our companies today. They're both hosting this webinar today. Um, a little bit about QCamp is that at QCamp we conduct um, web design as well as social media marketing, digital marketing, and graphic design. And we've helped design over 1,100 websites since we've been in business, and we've conducted over 5,000 website reviews. The Situated Research is our parent company, it's our usability company, where um, we actually have done, um, conducted over 5,000 website reviews in the last six years. And the reason for that is because all websites have issues or concerns when it comes to usability. Um, there's always something. Uh, it could be menu structure, it could be the content that's been written for the website, uh, it could be the layout, um, the way the website's organized, all different types of factors. Um, so we've actually, um, we've conducted these reviews, we continue to conduct these reviews. Um, because every website seems to have an issue when it comes to usability. So we want to help companies um, eliminate those issues so that their uh, companies are profitable and so that when they do run social media campaigns um, and bring, those, bring that traffic to their website, um, they leave a good impression on potential clients and customers. So um, the review that we do, it's free. Uh, we call it a free marketing analysis. So you get a free uh, 15 to 20 minute video uh, with a website um, usability expert who will review your website like we're going to do today in this webinar. Um, looking again at your menu structure, the layout of your pages, content, uh, imagery, branding, marketing, all of that good stuff. So that's all in the report. Um, so we look at your home page and we look at one internal page. So we don't look at the entire website, but it kind of gives you um, a good feel to see where your website kind of um, lays as far as the websites within your industry. So it gives you some good insight to make some changes. And if you want a full website analysis, um, we could give you um, pricing for that. It just depends on how big or how small your website is. So the analysis um, is of the overall user friendliness of your website. And it's research driven um, analysis, looking at your branding, your marketing presence, um, and the overall look and feel and functionality of the website. We also do an evaluation of your site's uh, navigation structure and ease of use. And then we also look at the action items to improve your website's effectiveness. So as far as user experience goes, um, when we first visit a website, we want to make sure that the, you know, the home page tells us exactly what your business is about. So we want a clear essence of business. Um, we also want to look at your color psychology, your branding, we want to see if the website is pretty to look at um, or if it's harsh on the eyes, does it make sense, it's boring, is it fun to use, uh, do you have too many words, um, the content that you do have on your website, is it giving you good information, uh, powerful messages, good clear calls to action, um, and so on and so forth. So that's um, the piece of user experience. Um, then we actually look at the functionality of a site. 
so we'll look at the wireframe, which is basically um, the blueprint of each page of your site, how things are laid out, where's your menus, um, if you have videos, where are those placed on pages, uh, if you have PDF files that pop up, where do those pop up, forms, etc. Um, for your menu navigation, we want to make sure that's simple and that's labeled correctly, um, meaning that you have clear, distinct labeling, short labels, um, you click on a page, you know exactly what will be on that page. Um, and then we look at your content. So we look for grammar mistakes. We look to make sure that your font size is readable, the color of your font makes sense. Um, then we look to make sure that you have contact information on your website, that it's easy for you to be contacted, um, and that you have help and documentation if that's needed within your website, such as an e-commerce site. Um, so we look at all of these different components. So why do we do this? Um, these improvements can help retain your customers. They can also help you to build trust online. Um, you have to remember that people are doing Google searches. Your website comes up if you've done a pretty good job with SEO and you have a lot of good significant traffic coming to your website. But once they come to your site, how do you gain trust? How do you build that trust online? So we have some good tips today uh, that we'll be showing you that will help with that. And also we want to help you to boost your sales. Um, that's the number one goal for all of us. Um, so we've done this webinar um, a number of times now. It's our most popular webinar. Um, and last year we did it twice a month. Um, and we did that all the way up until the fall, um, and then we kind of stopped that. So this year we want to continue with this webinar, but we're going to do it once um, a quarter now. And so if you'd like to have a free uh, look at your website, and we don't get to your website today, uh, you can request that um, through either Situated Research or QCAMP's website, and I'll give you that um, information at the end of today's session. So I'm going to go ahead and switch screens here. We're going to go ahead and start reviewing some websites. Okay. So the first website that I want to look at, um, this is actually a new client of ours, Brightside Theater, and they um, had us do a website review uh, before we started their project. Um, however, Jeff and Julie, I believe you guys are attending today, you had asked that we go ahead um, and do it during our webinar because there were some things that we didn't look at. Um, so again, when we do the free review, we look at the home page and we look at one internal page. So today we're going to do the same thing, um, but we're going to point some other things out as well. Um, there's also some free tools that we use as well to evaluate websites, so we'll be going through those too. So the first thing um, that we want to see when we come to a website is a clear essence of business. So here what we see um, it's a theater. It's a theater website, so it's very um, clear exactly what this website's going to be about. Um, gives us some clear information here as well to say that it's a downtown theater district theater um, with performing arts. So it's very clear, um, very precise, tells me exactly what the site will be about. So I know that I've landed on the right spot. Um, the next thing that we do is we look to see if the home page is too busy. So what we mean by that is sometimes when you go to a website right away, um, you'll get a newsletter pop-up or you'll get some kind of pop-up um, as soon as you arrive. And that can be distracting um, for users and also um, just this week actually. Uh, Google's announced that that's going to be frowned upon and that your website won't be looked at now for uh, search engine optimization ranking online um, if you have those pop-ups. So people do that for a number of reasons. They do it because they want to lead capture. So as soon as you come to the website, they want to know exactly who's coming. So they want you to fill out the form right away. But the majority of us, what do we do? We click the upper right-hand corner, the little X, and we look through the website 
because we came to the website for a purpose. We didn't come to fill out a form right away. We don't even know who they are. Um, so things like that or slideshows where there's a bunch of imagery just flashing at us or there's avatars talking to us or whatever the case may be. So this website, um, we would say that this is a little busy here um, and that uh, the way that it slides and flashes at you um, is, con is constant. So it really takes away from the other content that's on the home page. Um, you really don't have enough time to look at the imagery and then to read the content that's listed underneath. So that's, that's kind of hard as well. Um, so the next thing that we look at is the overall layout of the home page. So we have our company logo. We have some information here, uh, which is good. Uh, we have our main menu navigation, which is good. Users typically want to see that at the top. That's um, where most menus are located. Um, we do have the slideshow happening, so that's something that we would need to work on. Um, social media outlets and things here, these are not the right colors for these um, buttons. And um, I would say I wouldn't have them at the top of the page like this. I would have it at the footer or on the contact um, us page because um, it kind of takes away from the overall content on the home page. Um, the location here on upcoming events, I, I would keep upcoming events, that makes sense. Um, but as far as your contact information goes, that can go in the footer of the page as well as it can go on the Contact Us page. Okay, then this kind of tells us a little bit about the shows coming up, so that's good to have. Um, here, I'm not too sure what these images mean. I'm guessing that they are part of the Chamber of Commerce. They're, these are some groups that they belong to. I'm not too sure what this is. Um, nor is it clickable, so, um, and I can't read the content, so that's hard as well. And then I look at the footer and I say, okay, this isn't a typical footer for a website. Um, that would need to be updated, and um, having links to the pages of the website as well, because if you have, um, you can have your main menu navigation at the top, but also providing it in the footer um, is good as well, especially when you make your users scroll through pages. Um, and there's a lot of scrolling going on. They don't want to go back up to the top um, to the main menu navigation sometimes, so you want to allow that down here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the main menu navigation. And we've actually have already had several discussions around this. Um, when you're putting your main menu navigation together, labeling is important. Um, so short, concise labeling um, is good. Um, you also want to make sure that you're not giving your users too many options. Uh, so you want to have between four to six um, main menu buttons. So here we have nine. So this needs to be condensed. You also don't want to have too many sub pages. Um, because then information will get lost within the website. And then having sub-sub pages um, even adds to that confusion. So there's some ways to do this. Um, you have to look at the content of each page that you have on your website. And you have to say, okay, where can I combine pages? Where can I eliminate pages? Do I really need this content? Um, so something like about and work with us could be combined into one page. Um, also plan your visit and venue could be combined to the contact page. Um, shows and box office could be combined as well. Uh, support and media could be combined. So there's a lot of ways to do this, um, but we would need to look at the content of each page. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and look at an internal page. So we'll click Buy Tickets. So when we click on an internal page, we want to make sure that the website has consistency, 
meaning that the layout pretty much doesn't change. Otherwise, the user has to re-familiarize themselves with, okay, well, where's the main menu navigation? Where's the social media buttons? Where's the content going to be? Um, you'd be surprised how many websites we've evaluated where consistency is a huge issue, uh, where the home page looks one way and then the rest of the website looks totally different. Or even sometimes um, when you click on an internal page, it goes to an entirely different website. Um, we've had that happen as well. So consistency is key. So you can, they do a really good job of consistency here. Um, we have our content for the page here as well, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and um, click on a few more internal pages just to kind of check it out and see. So again, consistency is great. Um, they have their content here. Now this is a lot of content, and one thing um, that I would say uh, is users who are on the internet, and this is all of us, think about when you go to a website, when you have to scroll through a lot of information, you tend not to read it word for word. Um, and so we found in our testing that users don't read word for word. Uh, content on websites is um, basically for SEO and for ranking, um, unless there's information that the user is coming for. Um, otherwise, if you just have a page that scrolls with a bunch of information like this, um, it's not going to get read. So a way to um, eliminate that, and you're going to say, well, I don't want to eliminate this. This is our About Us page with our bios. Um, but to shorten the page a little bit is we could have the name of the person, their title, and then a plus sign, a little icon here. So if they wanted to read Jeff's bio, they could just click on the plus sign and it would be like an accordion and this would pop down when they're done. They could click the minus sign and it would go back up. So it would make the page very short and not overwhelming when the user came to the page. So just some helpful tips there. I'm going to go ahead and go to the contact page. Okay, so on the contact page we have um, their mailing address, their phone number, and an email. I would add a form to this page, and we've discussed that. Um, I would also add a map to show where your location is. Um, yeah, but other than that, um, you also have uh, contact information here as well. So um, it's kind of cumbersome. So uh, just the overall layout of the pages just needs to be worked with as well. Um, the other issue too is when I go to the home page, um, typically what I say, now every expert says something different and we kind of fight here too at uh, Situated Research and QCAP, but um, as far as I'm concerned, um, having a home button in the main menu navigation is not needed. Um, some of my colleagues would disagree with me, so this is a personal, um, you know, whatever you, you personally think. Um, but to kind of condense the main menu structure, I'd get rid of the home button um, because pretty much most users know that the company logo is clickable and that you can go back if you click on it to the home page. Um, unfortunately here, they didn't make their logo cl clickable probably due to the size um, of the image but that would help as well um, to kind of condense this main menu navigation too. Um, and then the other thing too is having an RSS feed. Um, that's kind of obsolete now. Nobody's really doing that, so I would get rid of that. And then a search box um, is that help and documentation that we talked about earlier. Um, but the amount of content on a website really determines if you're going to have a search box or not. Um, with the amount of content that's on this website now, I would have it. Um, however, once we redo the website, um, I wouldn't think that that would be needed unless the client really wanted to have that um, because the labeling will be clear and concise and you'll know exactly where everything's located. So uh, one of those free tools that we use is Validator. 
www.w3.org. Now what this site does, and you guys can go to it too, is what you do is you take the URL of the page that you want to test for programming errors. So if you want to test the box office page, you click on the box office page and you would copy this URL here. Um, same with the, any page. You just click on it and then copy the URL. So you go to validator.w3.org and then you just put in the address here. Then you hit check. What this is going to do is it's going to come up with all the programming errors that are on this page. The reason why this is important is because one, you want to make sure that your website's perfect. So you should want it to be perfect and error free. Two, this uh, free tool tells you exactly what the programming errors are. So your programmer or de web developer can go ahead and fix those issues. The third thing is that if you have any programming errors on any page of your site, if someone is using Safari as opposed to uh, Google Chrome, your website could be functioning or looking or acting differently in different um, search engines. So someone could be on Safari and your website could be working perfectly. Someone could be on Google Chrome and it doesn't work at all. So on the home page here, they have 38 errors, 32 warnings. Um, and it tells you exactly what those errors are, what line of code, um, and if it needs to be fixed. So that's something also to kind of take a peek at. The other tool that we use is marketing.grader.com. And so basically this is um, a website grader um, through HubSpot, which most of you are familiar with, and you simply put in the URL uh, to your website. And then you put in your email address. There we go. And what this is going to do, it's going to look at the overall speed of your website. It's going to look at uh, your search engine optimization, if your website's secure or not. Um, so it's going to give you a grade out of 100. So this website got a 39, which is pretty low. Um, okay, so if we look at it, um, as far as performance goes, a 24 out of 30 isn't too bad. Um, page speeds and that kind of thing could be upped a little bit. Um, but the biggest thing is that this website was not made for mobile, so it's not responsive. Um, and that's a huge issue because nowadays all websites uh, should be responsive because everyone's on a mobile device, they're on their smartphone, they're on a tablet, um, iPad, whatever. Um, so if your website isn't mobile ready, you're losing out on that clientele as well. Um, so that's something that needs to happen. And then their SEO is half, so 15 out of 30. So there's some things that can be done for that as well. Um, and then their website's not secure at all. So the process um, that the theater uses to purchase tickets is not through their website. So if we go to um, buy tickets, and we want to go ahead and um, purchase tickets. I'll just say we want to buy this package. It takes us to a third party site called uh, Vendini, which is their checkout system. Um, so Vendini is um, secure because it starts with, it has HTTPS in front of the URL, so the S is for secure. Um, but if you go back to bright sides, they don't have that. So um, they're not processing payments through their website, so technically it doesn't need to be secure, but something else that Google just rolled out this year is that they want all websites to have an SSL certificate through their hosting company um, to make sure that all websites are secure. Um, from hacking and also to make sure that your website and your company is legit because you will purchase an SSL certificate. So you can read up on that, you can Google it, um, what an SSL certificate is and why Google wants you to have that. Um, I'm not sure 
what the article said when they're going to actually um, stop uh, ranking websites that don't have an SSL certificate. I would have to go back in the article, but you can go ahead and Google that. So definitely want to speak with your hosting company and talk to them about that. But this is a great free tool because it gives you a grade and it kind of goes through um, some basics that your website should have. Okay, so that concludes uh, the website review for that website. Now we're going to go ahead um, and downtown Naperville, um, their dying section uh, contacted us and wants to take a look at um, their portion of their websites. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the first thing that happens when we come to the website is a pop-up appears. So again, Google just announced this week that they want to stop those from happening. Um, or they won't be ranking your website. So that's something to think about. Um, a way to get around that and still get lead capturing is to have people be on the website for like five seconds and then have a pop-up. Um, that would help out. There's a lot of different things that you can do or have it embedded within the website. So if they click on the second page in the website, the pop-up comes up. Um, that's okay to do. Um, but as soon as you come to a website, having this pop up right away, that's the issue and the concern. So we would have to um, reevaluate that for these guys. So we're looking, um, this is a website all about downtown Naperville, shopping, dining, services that they offer, directory, events, specials, news. Uh, there's also a sub menu here as well. Um, so when I come to the website, it says Downtown Naperville. That's the name of the site. So I'm guessing the site's all about Downtown Naperville. Uh, the imagery is really nice of food. Um, and I think, I think I might have done something wrong. Let me see. I think I clicked Dine and that's why that occurred. Yeah, I just want downtownnaperville.com. Okay. So now we're looking at the, I think we were clicked on Dying, and that's what happened. Let's see. Let's see what happens when you click on Dying. Just wondering if that pop up is going to come up again. Okay. Could be because I'm already on the website. Okay. So good imagery. Um, ladies shopping. There's over 100 stores. That's really good to know. Um, Perfect mix of shops, restaurants, and attractions. We've got some uh, logos, some buttons here as well, um, an event that's going to be coming up. So that's good with good imagery. Uh, some things that's telling us what's happening around town. Okay. Um, some more buttons. Give the perfect gift. Um, oh, gift cards, okay. Sign up for our weekly newsletter. We've got some social media buttons here, and we've got our footer. Okay. So when we come to the homepage, we know exactly what this is about. Um, there are some images to go through here. Okay. So they have a slideshow, which is good. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead, um, see how this logo is clickable. So I can click on it, it takes me back to the home page. That's good. Um, so let's look at the main menu navigation. We have seven options. So we want to have between four to six. So we would need to kind of take a look at that. Um, and then we have a sub menu as well, another menu. Okay. So that could get confusing too. Usually contact is in the main menu. Um, hotel is new, I know, to downtown Naperville, the new hotel. So that's something that was added. I would kind of take a look at the menu navigation here and just make sure that it makes sense. Um, this white text on a black background is so hard for users to read. Um, and aesthetically, like, it's harsh on the eyes. So this is something I would change the background color. 
also I would line up this paragraph so that this is centered because it's off right now. Um, the logos of the businesses I would actually have in color instead of black and white. Um, let's see, also these are buttons and so I would make them buttons. You can tell that they're clickable because the hand is over them, but they should light up with a different color so that you do know that you're hovered over. Um, same with this button. So see how this has a white background? This is just easier. All of this content pops. Um, it's easier on the eyes as well. But there's a lot of content here. Um, and just the way that it's laid out is a little confusing. You look here, you look here, you look there. Um, so maybe some organization here would be would be better. And again, these are buttons, but they don't light up. So that's something else to take a look at. Um, there's just a lot of content on the home page. So pretty much everything that you're offering, you're putting on the home page. So that's something also to think about. I'm wondering if this is a one page design. Let me just take a peek real fast. So we go to shop. Okay, so it's it's not. Okay. I thought it was a one-page design, and that's why all the offerings were on the home page. So the home page needs to be organized um, with to have less information. Um, we're going to go ahead and click on an internal page. So we clicked here. We click shop. So we'll look at this again. The background um, is harsh on the eyes with the white content. This isn't centered. Logo should be in color. Button should be um, hoverable. That's a word. <laughs> I'm not too sure what just happened. For some reason, it took me to the directory. OK, so this is current specials. OK, it takes you through all the specials that are in town at the stores. Okay, what's trending now? Interesting, but see how this content's just all over the place. There's different size boxes. Um, it's just really hard because there's so much content. So there's a better way to organize it and to eliminate content as well. I really don't feel like um, trends, what's trending now needs to be on here at all. Um, you're not selling clothing, you're um, selling downtown um, and the shops that you have. Um, so this kind of content would be on those companies' websites, not necessarily on this website. But consistency is good. Um, the layout of the pages stays the same as well, which is good. We're going to go to one of these pages. I just want to see how this looks. Okay. So, um, oops. Okay, so this overlapping this box is kind of confusing. Again, the button isn't a regular button. Um, okay, we have a contact us form, which is good. Okay, so that's good. Oop. I don't know what's going on. We're going to go ahead and go to plan your visit and see how that's any different than the contact us page. Um, okay. This could all be on the contact us page, so then you wouldn't need a page like this. Again, all this content is just way too much. Okay, so something to take a look at. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the home page. And we're going to go ahead and copy that URL. And we're going to go to our free tools. So we're going to go to validator.w3.org first. Check to see what the programming errors on the home page. So we have how many errors? 21 issues, um, which is the home page. Okay. 
And if we go to website creator, go ahead and put in the URL. It's going to go ahead and run through and see how fast the website is, if there are any issues. Um, so it got a 74 out of 100, which is not too bad. Um, so see the first thing, this is a screenshot of the first thing that they see when they come to the website. So that pop-up is there, that's going to have to get fixed. Uh, as far as performance goes, it's pretty good. Um, they do have a mobile responsive version, so they got 30 out of 30, which is perfect. They need to work on SEO a little bit. Um, a site map is missing. We didn't talk about this on the other website, but a site map is basically the hierarchy of your navigation, of your menu structure. Um, and that gets submitted to different search engines so that they can start looking at your website, looking at the traffic that's coming to your website and ranking you. So that's important to have. Also, it's another feature on your website. So in your footer, you would have the word site map. So here they have their actual menu structure, but you'd have the word site map. You could click it and then a page would come up with a hierarchy. Um, of each page of their site and so then that can also help people um, do searches as well. So with that help and documentation we talked about earlier um, and their website is not secure at all probably because they're not purchasing well actually yeah you are the gift card. I was going to say you're not purchasing anything on the website but you are so let's see what this process looks like if we wanted to do a gift card buy online. Okay, so it does take you to a secure page. That's a third party. So, um, just like the theater, it's okay to do things like this where you're going to a third party, but some people, some visitors might be like, well, why am I being taken off of the website that I was on? Why am I now on a third party page? Who is this? Who store cards online? Like, is this secure? It says it's secure, but I'm kind of leery. I'm not going to fill this out. So that's something to also think about, and also the new um, rule with the search engines about having an SSL certificate for every website. So something else to think about, too. So we are finished with that one. We're going to go ahead and go to the next one, which is the San Diego Convention Center. Okay, so we talked about this when you first come to a website having things that are distracting to you. Um, when you do a Google search, we all do this. We're doing a search for certain keywords, um, a certain thing that we're trying to find. Um, and so when we're brought to a website like this where it's just really busy and taking away from the content, it gets distracting. So although it looks flashy and kind of cool, um, it's taking away from that experience. And I, some users might just click off and go back to their searches and go to the next search result. Um, so something to think about. Um, you could put this on an internal page or something like that, but when you first come to the home page, all of this going on is not needed. Um, just having good imagery is enough. Um, so we see San Diego Convention Center, so it's San Diego's Convention Center. Um, when we come to the website, we know what that is. Um, so I would take a look here. Planners, attendees, exhibitors makes sense. This section looks very cumbersome. There's a lot of information. Um, it's kind of just placed together here um, in no particular order or placement um, that makes sense. Uh, it looks really crammed. And the color of the content as well, um, I understand. And, and this is an issue that comes up a lot when we review websites is they try to match the color of their content to their branding of their logo, which sounds like a good idea. Um, however, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, in this case, it doesn't. Um, Normally when people see colored content like this on a colored background, they think that it's um, a hyperlink. Um, and if it is a hyperlink, which this is here, 
it should be underlined, should be highlighted when I hover over it so that I know that it's clickable. So that's a concern as well. Um, so things to do in San Diego, this is, these icons are very hard to read with this background. So that's, I would put a solid background, get rid of the image. And the footer is very busy. So the proper way to put a footer um, together to have your menu structure in your footer um, is not to have the subpages listed as well. They did this for SEO. Um, you just want to have the main pages listed and then sitemap. Um, also, they have their copyright here, so they do have a sitemap, which is good. I'm glad I see that. And then they have their social media buttons, which is good as well. I'm going to click on their sitemap just so you can see. Hopefully, they did this correctly. Okay, they did. Um, so see how it's a hierarchy of every page of the website? So this um, will help people who get lost as on the website as well as um, it gets submitted to the search engines too. So that they search engines know exactly what pages you have, what content will be on those pages, and they can start uh, rank ordering you based on uh, the traffic that you have coming to your site. So the logo is clickable. We just tried that. That's good. Um, for help and documentation, we do have a sitemap, and we also have a search box. So for this type of site, um, a convention center, there's a lot of content. Um, so having a search box is very important. Um, visit our blog here. I wouldn't have that. If they have a blog, it should be in the main menu navigation. So let's take a look at the main menu navigation. We have six buttons, which is between that four to six that we spoke about. But then we have submenus. And then we have sub menus. So yes, this is a convention center. There's a lot of content. But if you had an information architect take a look at the content on each page, I'm sure there are pages that could be eliminated or combined um, so that we wouldn't have this. Because all this information is going to get lost within the website. And guarantee the search box gets used a lot. Um, so that's not a good user experience. Um, yeah, there's a lot. But especially here. Yeah. Meet the team. Wow. And I'm not sure why meet the team is under services. Should have an about page and then all that information. Also, um, Wow. Okay, so when I hover over Meet the Team and I go over here and I want to click Executive Team, I have to go very slow. Otherwise, if I try to scroll down the list, look what just happened. And I, I made it to this menu. So that's a programming issue. I'm sure when we do um, the validator website, there's going to be a lot of programming errors on the home page, and that's probably going to be one of them. Um, the buttons are good. Um, you can tell, you know, the font changes. Um, but find an event. This is kind of hard to read with the background, so I would make this a button color as well. These are clickable, so see how they um, darken. So I know that that's clickable, so that's good. These change colors, so I know that that's clickable. Um, event calendar, same thing happens. You see, I can tell this is a button. Um, I didn't click that. So that could be another issue. See how these, I can't tell? That's a problem. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at um, a couple of the internal pages. I really want to look. Okay, I really want to look. Oh, wow. Let me try one more time. Let's try convention services. Okay, yeah, I can't, I can't scroll down the sub sub menu. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and click that. Um, so Tides Restaurant. Okay, so when we talk about consistency, um, we want each page to look the same. So that we want the menu structure to look the same, etc. So. Under services, we have the same menu structure, but now we have these buttons. So this is confusing. I want to look at another internal page just to see if it does that as well. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I kind of see how you guys did that. Um, okay. But um, this isn't needed here. We still have our main menu navigation with our submenus, so you can get rid of this. Um, so we have some information. Okay, let's look at another um, internal page. Guest services. And let's scroll down. Oh, this page is very short. Wow, that's really short. <laughs> All right, let's look at another page. Business Center, that's very short as well. Um, hmm. Let's click on this page. Okay, so that's good that the pages are short. Um, what happens here if I click this? Okay, PDF comes up, so that's good. You're still within the website. Okay, so let's go... Um, Let's go ahead and run this. Through um, validator, I want to see. I'm curious. Watch, there won't be any. <laughs> no, there will be because that menu structure has some issues. Um, okay, so we have. 39 issues with the home page. Um, I'm going to do an internal page too. Someone was just um, wrote in their chat box, which by the way, I didn't say at the beginning. If you do have any questions on your upper right hand corner in your chat box, you can go ahead and write those questions. Um, but I want to see, someone said, why don't we look at an internal page? So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll see how many errors the technology page had. So the home page had, what was it, 39? This one has 32. So, um, yeah, that's going to need to be looked at. We're going to go ahead and go back to the home page so I can grab that URL. For a website grader. So the website should be secure. Um, because it has HTTPS, which means it's secure. It does have that SSL certificate, so let's see what HubSpot says here. And sometimes this takes a few seconds. Um, you got 67 out of 100. Oh, good. It came up, so I'm not a liar there. Um, okay, so the, so the performance is a 12 out of 30, and it's probably because of the imagery that's on the home page. Um, the page speed's very slow. So yeah, we need to optimize that and make sure that uh, that gets fixed. It does have a mobile version, so it's responsive, which is good. The SEO, though, is a 15 out of 30. So it has a sitemap, it has settings, but it's missing page titles and meta descriptions. So that's something that needs to be added, and it is secure, which is good. Um, we're going to go ahead and go back here. What I want to do is there's no contact us. There's no way to contact them. That's a problem. So that needs to be added to the structure, um, menu structure as well. Um, and the footer does have contact information. But the, I don't see a contact form anywhere. Contact us page, which is kind of weird. Um, so that needs to be put there as well. Something else that I'm noticing is that this is not this top menu structure, which is what should be here. This is a secondary um, menu structure. Now, some websites it's okay to do this. Typically though, you don't want to do this. Um, but this is the San Diego Convention Center, so it's a big organization. Um, so basically they have everything about the convention center up here, but then as far as the administrative, that's all down here. So about the company, the media center, location, contacting them, 
signing in, all that kind of stuff is down here. And actually signing in, that's huge to sign in. Um, that should be up front and center um, on the website at the top saying sign in or member sign in. Um, so that's critical as well. Okay, so I think that concludes um, this. So now we're going to go back. Just give me a second here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we are going to go. Okay, there we go. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, so we're going to go to, my PowerPoint isn't working, uh, the last page so I can give you that uh, contact information. So, again, if you'd like uh, your website reviewed and we didn't get to it today, uh, you can request a free report on either website, at Situated Research or QCAM. Uh, there's our phone numbers as well. You can go ahead and give us a call. Um, and we can do that. Typically, the turnaround time is 48 uh, hours to receive that 15 to 20 minute video. Um, and we look at the home page of your website as well as one internal page. And don't forget those free tools. Um, before you request a free report, test your website. Uh, go to validator.w3.org and see if you have any programming errors. Uh, go to marketing.grader.com and make sure that your website is responsive. The SEO is done. It's secure. Um, your page load speeds are quick. Um, because if someone comes to your website and the wheel's spinning, that's not good. Um, and most of us don't have the patience for that, so we click off right away. So it's something to definitely think about. Um, so I hope that you all gained something today, some kind of tip or anything for your website. And again, it, we would be more than happy to review your site. So just go ahead and contact us. Um, you can even shoot us an email at uh, info at situatedresearch.com or info at qcamp.com. Um, we'd be more than happy to set up a free consultation to talk to you. So I want to thank you all for attending today and I hope that you have a wonderful day.